Hey, how's it going? I'm Sephiros. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about EEPROM slash Shades Base. Um, these are, this is a technique that is inspired by the techniques that I learned in the EEPROM and Shades live streams that they did on YouTube. So definitely go check those out. Um, they're on there. And basically, the phenomenon that EEPROM was taken advantage of with this technique is called intermodulation distortion. And that's when you have two sounds that are being clipped together, distorted together, and they start to cancel each other out in interesting ways. And depending on which one's louder, you'll hear one kind of choking the other sound out. And, and you'll hear them kind of fuse together in an interesting way. And um, you can make a lot of really interesting sounds with this technique. And so uh, my techniques involve a little bit of interesting MIDI routing and key track filtering that I can get into. Um, and I'm also going to show how it, you can use this technique in a track um, where you can kind of evolve the bases over time which is fun um, possibly we'll get to that but let's do the fundamental technique here so I'm gonna start with a sine wave <coughs> and we're gonna want to put this in a group and we're gonna do the clipping on this group call it bass clipping. All right, so we have our sub. Now we're going to make a new MIDI track. I'm going to call this top. And here's our sub, right? If I route the MIDI to receive from sub bass on the top bass channel and then click in, now it's input monitoring the MIDI, which means it'll receive the MIDI that I play on the sub bass. So now let's go into the top bass here and let's grab some interesting bass sample. Let's go into some of my Patreon packs. And I'm actually going to use Simpler for this. And the reason for that being is in Simpler you can use the texture mode. So let's go back to the samples. Where were they? Yeah, see the sub is really inconsistent in that. So in our top base, now we can like do interesting things. Let's hear these two together. So I'm going to start pitching this one up and I'm going to use the pitch MIDI plugin. Let's stretch it out. So I'm going to hit warp and then times two a couple times. Alright, next thing I'm going to do is get a filter out. Now, the sampler has a filter in it, but I want to use a different filter. So I'm going to get the volcano out. This is a really great filter. You can do a similar thing with this. Uh, I can show you the rift filter, which is free, I believe. And this will allow you to do the same thing where it has a MIDI function. So if you change it to MIDI, you can make it a high pass. And then 
we're going to use this external instrument here to send the MIDI to top and then to the rift filter and now the rift filter will track around and so that's cool because if we get a resonant peak it'll stay harmonically related So now that we have that, let's get some clipping going on. But also what I'm going to do is take this rift filter and put it on the bass clipping group. And we're going to cut the sub out of this bass clipping group like this. Let's make sure it's set to MIDI. And then with this sub bass, I'm going to group it. And we're going to send MIDI to this one as well. So we'll get our external instrument out, put it in the group with our sub patch, send it to bass clipping, and then rift filter, and then cut the sub out. So it's tracking. So let's get a clipper. I'm going to use decapitator. And let's put that on bass clipping before the filter so that the sub hits the clipper. And I'll just hit punish, which is going to amp put a bunch of gain going into this. So now to get the sub back in, let's make another audio channel outside of the bass clipping group. Let's call it sub clean. And let's take the audio from sub bass. And then we want to select pre effects so we have a clean bass, even if we put effects on this. Now let's hear this. So a lot of things happen on the tails of these sounds, so let's get some nice attack and release to the sound. I'll go into my sub patch and just give it a little bit of attack. A little release. And same with the other sound, the top sound, let's give it a little release. Sounding cool now. Let's change the cutoff. Alright, so now to clip this more, let's put a utility before the decapitator. And we can start boosting the gain into this utility. And I'll turn the channel down to compensate first. So let's get a little bit more release on this upper sound. Start to pitch it around more. Let's turn it up again. Turn the upper channel up, the top channel.
let's get like some other sounds. Let's just get another phase plant. Because I find this sounds good with clean sounds too, instead of dirty sounds. So let's get a clean sound. Let's get like a analog. See, that's pretty interesting. And the next thing we're going to want is like some little sidechain reverb. So let's get some sidechain reverb out. I'll show you this rack. Basically, you just got a parallel, fully wet reverb, right? Fully wet. Parallel in a chain. So there's a dry chain and a wet chain that has the reverb. And then I'm using a compressor. So I'll take the audio from. <clears throat> the sub bass so I chain it to the sub bass the top to the sub bass for the reverb here and then the pro C will cut it out You can also put the reverb like before the clipper on the group. Give the bass a little bit more release on the sub. Let's also give it uh, like an LFO, turn it off so that it's just like more like an envelope and give a bit of a pitch modulation so it's like an 808. Something more like that. Let's try going messing with this top bass more. Turn the bass up more on the top here. Let me turn the sub up more. Let's give the sub a little more of a smooth release. So that's kind of what I was going for, that really staccato note.
So these are fun because you can kind of evolve them over time. So let's get our top and let's do some like interesting filter peak with Volcano 3. So let's get a filter peak going. <laughs> automate the gain to go up into this clipper more and more. Another thing that sounds kind of crazy is like crash cymbals. I could get some metal samples out of my metal sample pack that I made. Something like that. Has some weird reverb on it too. And then we'll just take the audio from the sub bass, or the, the MIDI I should say, put it on input monitoring. the scale on zero so it doesn't pitch the crash and I'm also going to do a high pass filter on it and let's take the key tracking off that and then just keep the highs <laughs> Cool, we could try another one. Yeah, something like that. So we could automate like the gain of that over time to have it come in.
I guess the next step would be to group these, call this base main group, and then probably resample that because you can't freeze and flatten groups. So let's go main base group and let's sample this. So that was the sample right there. So we could maybe make some cool fill bass <coughs> or response bass with this by putting it in a sampler and then mute this and then let's put Call it base respond. I'm gonna just put this sample over here so it doesn't bug bug me. All right, and then let's um, just just automate a gain utility. I have this gain preset called zero dB top gain, which just has the macro set to be zero dB at fully write. We can use this to automate some. Um, main base group fill sections. So I think right here would be good. Let's go for a reverse and reverse some of these. Let's use the pitch envelope. gonna duplicate that and put one here let's do somewhere other let's use the filter envelope I'm gonna turn the filter on key track off filter envelope on so let's duplicate these, duplicate the automation. 
So I could keep going with this, but I think that does it for the technique. Hope that made sense. I hope you learned something and enjoyed. So thanks to Mom Sephros. Check out if you want my sounds, Patreon. I offer lessons on there too. And yeah, go support me on Patreon. Subscribe, share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. And big up. Peace.